The simplicity of an amazing co-pilot will completely change your ability to interact with your trading bots. Check it out in this episode. In this episode, I show people how to build a user interface that they can connect to the MetaTrader 5. It's super helpful and acts a little bit like a co-pilot for your trading bots. There's a couple of things you'll need in order to complete this episode. Firstly, I really recommend that you check out my previous episodes that'll show you how to connect MetaTrader 5 to your user interface. That'll really help you get the most out of this experience. And secondly, you really need a working MetaTrader 5. It's actually really critical because the information that we get comes straight from your MetaTrader 5. Once you've got those things, you'll be able to continue on with the episode. And just a quick note, I'm actually thinking about building a complete course that shows people how to build these amazing trading bots for MetaTrader 5 in Python. I'd love to hear your feedback on whether you think that's valuable, how much you'd be willing to pay for it, and what format you'd like that release, because it'll really help me as a creator continue building the things that I love, and it'll be money that we can immediately reinvest back into the Tradeoxy platform. Let me know. Here's what we're going to be working towards over the next couple of episodes. You can see here that we've got our user interface and we're starting to add in some really cool functionality. So we've got our settings file, if we select that, we're going to select MetaTrader 5, and then it's automatically going to load the symbols that we can use. Choose what time frame we want and then we're going to get the data and it comes up here. Now if you've been following the series so far, you would have already seen us get this first part up here all ready to go. So that's totally fine. You can check out my previous episodes to see that. What's really cool now is starting to connect it to what you're getting from your MetaTrader 5 terminal. This can be really powerful in the future as it helps us to start building up our co-pilot. So let's show you the code that helps you to get there. What I want to do is go through a little bit about the refactoring of our app data and then we'll start heading into some of the other functions that you need in order to get there. Now I anticipate this is going to take two episodes to get through so if we get halfway through and then it cuts out just head to the next episode that I'll be posting in a couple of days. The first thing that we really want to be able to do is to create a function to get our data. Now the reason that we do it this way is because it allows us to refactor the code in a way that keeps it really, really simple to use in the future, allowing you to expand it to all the other platforms that I know that you're interested in getting to. So here's what this function looks like. It's got no inputs and we're going to call it get data. First of all, we're going to start by getting what platform we're using, which is going to be through a streamlit variable, which I'll talk about in a little bit more time. Then we want to check our platform state, and if it's not there, we want to create an error message. Now the reason for this is just to make sure that if we're not recording what's happening, it'll tell you so you don't have to spend hours and hours debugging it. Next, we want to make sure that if the platform is MetaTrader 5, <coughs> then we go ahead and we're going to do something, and we're just going to change it to remove that space, and that'll make it easier to pass around as a variable uh, as we go through the rest of the episodes and as we keep building our platform. We go ahead and we're going to get the symbol. We're going to use the same pattern that we just used before, which is we check for the symbol. If it's not there, we throw an error. Okay, time frame. Same thing there. And when we've got all of that information, then we're going to go ahead and get our data. Now, to show you what these look like, the purpose behind these is to allow you, if I pull up this again, the terminal, let's say, for instance, I didn't select anything. So if I just refresh this, yes and we have our trading platform, but let's say I forgot to choose a symbol. Now, when you've only got a couple of selection options, that might seem a little bit unrealistic, but you'll see as we keep building out this cool co-pilot that there are times where that might happen. So if we try to do this now, it's just going to choose, say, please select a symbol. It's going to immediately tell you what you need to do to fix it. So just a really, really helpful, easy to use um, thing to help you there. Then we're going to go ahead and get the data. We'll go through this helper function in a little bit. Okay, and then once we get the data, we're going to write that data. So this data is actually the data frame that you see getting written to the screen uh, in the demo that I showed you at the start. And if there's any errors, we're going to write that error to the screen. Here you can see I've just refactored the code that we were using in the previous episodes about getting the platform information. So we check that our platform is connected. If it's not, we go ahead and we get it. Okay, we go and get our settings file if we've chosen to do that. Um, then we go ahead get our username and passwords. Once we get it, we start MetaTrader 5 and we go ahead and we do what we need to do there. 
So here's our updated main statement. And again, you can go through the previous episodes if you want to see how I build this. I'm just going to go through what I've got here so far. Um, you can also see in the GitHub repository that I label all of the different episodes that I create in separate folders. So if you want to follow the code progression through, you can absolutely do that. I'll soon be releasing a paid course which actually has the full code breakdown and it really helps you a lot more. Um, so if you're interested in that, please drop me a note um, or sign up to Tradeoxy or the Discord and just let me know because I'd love to know and sort of figure out what my audience is going to be and what sort of prices people are willing to pay for it. It's really going to help me to continue to create the content that I love and build our Tradeoxy platform. Um, here we go, here's our main statement. So we create a bunch of session states. Now what these session states actually are is in Streamlit, this is how Streamlit kind of passes information around internally to it. If we didn't have this we'd have to do weird things like write it to a JSON file and then read it every single time which is completely legitimate but also kind of annoying. Streamlit allows us to have this Streamlit session state which in a sense creates a global variable that we can reference throughout the reference to the rest of our code base. Um, so you can see here like this settings file is a session state, this platform is a session state and I'll show you where they turn up in the code. Again, really makes building your user interface a lot easier and a lot smoother to be able to use as well. All of this you should be really familiar with, creating the header, the start button and everything else. Where it gets really interesting is this here where we get down to about line 58 on this and we start to create our different pieces of information. So in the previous episode I wasn't using <coughs> our session states to pass these symbols around. I was just manually retrieving them and had a bit of a different way of doing it. Using this method is actually a lot simpler and that's what we'll be using moving forward. The reason why is because if we want to change from MetaTrader 5 to Binance for instance or Coinbase or anything else we don't have to change any of this code. All we have to do is change that function that we had up there earlier. Um, we do the same thing for our time frame selection. Okay, now the time frame, we do have to specify that manually and I'll show you where we do that in a moment. Um, <clears throat> and the reason for that is because each platform has a slightly different way of doing it. So we just create a little mapping um, and then we will go ahead. So the settings file you should be well used to, the alerting you should be well used to, Hey, the Discord thing we'll get to soon, which I'm pretty excited about. Our trading platform, I've added some new ones just to you know, continue showing you what we're going to be working through. Alpaca, MetaTrader 5, Binance and Coinbase. And then we have our make trades, which we still haven't got into yet, but we will. So here we've effectively set up our user interface and that's pretty cool. Next, what we want to start doing is going ahead and getting the information that we need in order to fill out these boxes. So I'll show you how to do that in the next episode.